I'm General Yakbar, and I'm going to show you how you can use empties to make your life easier in Blender. Let's do it. Number one, cloth physics. Cloth sims in Blender are not always the best, but if you don't have money for Marvelous Designer or some other tool like that, and if you're cheap and lazy like me, you can use Blender, and you can use this method to do eh, pretty good cloth sims. Look at this cloth. It's like moving around and like like there's wind or he's going super saiyan or whatever so that is all being done by this one empty right here you can see if i kind of zoom out a little bit i have it keyframe to constantly go up but if you can see if i rotate it if i just rotate it that's also one and so this is just an empty and here's how i set that up let's say this is a piece of cloth or like a sleeve or something like that we're going to the modifiers we're going to add a displace i don't know where anything is i just search for it so new click this button here and then we'll just do clouds uh, that's pretty good we go back to the modifier coordinates local if you click on this you go to object now you can eyedropper pick an object it can be an object or it can also be an empty shift a to look for an empty and you know you can really pick whatever is easiest for you to click on i like sphere cube circle sometimes depends anyway uh let's do cube and let's just move it over here to the side like that cool so it's next to it then we click on our cloth click the eyedropper and then select the empty. You can see it changed a little bit, but that just shows that it's connected. You can take this, hit G, and then move it around, and uh, there you go. So if you move it really slowly, you can see it's doing some stuff, and this is just like a noise pattern that's going through it. Uh, maybe the strength is a little too high, so we can bring it down. Let's say there's wind blowing from below, and you want it to look like it's going up. So shade smooth this, looks even better. So yeah, there you go. Number two simple animation here's a scene i made recently where from the camera view it looks like the road is moving the cars are moving there's this like akira style bike guy that's like dodging and weaving traffic and it looks really dynamic and cool but the reality is that everything is animated by empties so first i made this ring this ring of a highway and the ring itself as you can see is not animated there's no keyframes there but it is tied to an empty and that empty is this larger sphere empty in the middle and because everything is kind of pivoting around the world origin this point right in the middle so everything can be super static parented together and then the final movement of it can be the empty so that's what's going on here i have these other empties so if i zoom in you can see there's a couple more objects in here so this cube what is that controlling that is controlling if i rotate that's controlling our main biker guy here. These cars are this cone right here. If I rotate the cone on the Z-axis, all I have to worry about is rotating on the Z-axis on nothing else, and I'm just moving an entire group of assets through this scene. The other nice thing is, let's say the main core animation is this right here, but I also want him to like dodge and weave and do all this like fancy stuff within that main motion path. Because I'm not keyframing the guy, I'm keyframing the empty that's controlling him, I can then keyframe the bike to do all these extra special moves within that main rotation. Now, let me show you what I mean. Lock my view to this guy, and when I press play, you can see his keyframes are down here. His act The actual keyframes of the bike and it doing all its stuff is down here. And when I play it back, it's still going along that road as everything else is, but I can finesse it and then give the actual animation some more character and personality and story and all these kinds of things. So it looks like this big complex animation, but really the empties are controlling the whole show. You can also animate cameras and lights with empties. Say we have a light. And I want it to rotate constantly, like some kind of siren or alarm. I can just animate it individually or I can add an empty. Let's make it a cube just to make it easier. We'll place it right kind of in the middle of that light. Click the light. We'll shift click the empty. Control P, parent to object. So now we can rotate the empty and we can kind of do all kinds of wacky stuff with it. But the light will always be like we'll maintain there if we, in case we want to animate it in addition to it as well. So it's like a backup keyframe option. So now we have the light spinning 360 degrees and the light itself is not even animated. It's the empty that's doing it. I love this. So let's say I like this light spinning like this. <laughs> so let's say I like the light spinning like this and I want to bring it into another area. So then what I do is I go into the graph editor and let's say I bring it over here and now I have these two. Oh, and I bring it over here and now I have these two lights. So I open the graph editor so I can kind of see what's going on. I can select this empty, drop down the um, 
all of this stuff. I don't know what to call it, the coordinates. Uh, and then just uncheck the location. So then I can move its location. It's not affected, but the rotation still works, which is handy. If you want to have multiple lights throughout your Arctic base or whatever with alarms and sirens and stuff going on. And what's nice about this is, again, you still have control over the light itself. If you want to, like, adjust it, if you want to move it or anything like that. And it will always kind of be tied to that empty and spin. And then the second thing is camera. So, okay, let's say I wanted to go from here to here. And then I also want it to, like, to turn or something like this way. Let's say I want it to, like, look at some... God damn it. God, what is going on? <laughs> I can't, what is, bruh. Okay, this way, this way. Oh no, like that. Okay, good. And now when I play it, it's just this. That's not what I want. <laughs> this is like a fight sequence camera right here. It's not what I want. And it's confusing because it looks like everything kind of worked. I don't know, like why is it, you know, the, these keyframes look smooth to me, but the animation is clearly not smooth. So what we can do is get rid of all these keyframes and Instead, what we can do is we can, that's right. So uh, I'll add a cube again, take the camera, parent it to the empty. I wanna have the same movement, GX like that. We can make it vector. So it's constantly looping and we can jump into the camera view and we can, well, can't really see anything. And you have your camera kind of moving by all of these objects, but we wanna then make little adjustments to the camera as one would. And let's say we want to have it turn towards the things. Oh, God. Uh, like that. Okay, cool. So now it can kind of, it still moves, but then we only have one, really one movement to look at. The extra bonus third thing within this second part of the video, I'll do a sphere this time. Sphere. We'll place it here. When we play back the animation, the camera kind of loses track of the things. And like, I don't want to add another keyframe to make it look even more over and all this kind of stuff. Let's just delete all these keyframes to the camera, but the camera itself, add a constraint, track two, and we want it to track to this empty. So you can see now there's a little connection line here, a blue connection line. Now, look at that. We don't have to keyframe the camera at all because we're using empties to do everything. And this is a really good shot. Like if you want a car driving by, any kind of motion or parallax, it's really, really good for this. Number three, shaders and general VFX. So let's say I have this plane here, right? Let's say I have this plane here <laughs> and I want there to be like a little stage light, but I don't want to use lights. You know, we can do that. So I'm going to add an empty first. And this time it's going to be, I'm going to go with a sphere because this is really going to help what, uh, what we're trying to do here. I'm going to select my plane. This is just a basic shader, but I'm going to add a gradient texture. Gradient texture. Go from linear to quadratic sphere specifically. Plug that into the color, and we can see there's something going on here, but it's not quite right. Just like the tracking for the camera, we're going to track this gradient to the empty. So let me show you how we do that. I'm using the Node Wrangler add-on. That's like a, you should definitely have that turned on. It just comes with Blender. But I'm going to press Control T, and it's going to open this texture coordinates mapping thing. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff except from object plug that into vector, and then use the eyedropper again to select our empty. Look at that. Now we have this little stage light, essentially, that we can kind of move along the material. It's not really a light, but we can kind of make it a light. So go back to the plane, which is where this effect is happening, and we plug the color into here and press like five to make it really bright. And now this kind of is lighting up whatever object it goes under. Let's take the color and plug it into the alpha. Now we get rid of all the black and we keep only the white parts. And when we move the empty, and now it's like this kind of glowy, I don't know what this could be used for, but you can probably figure it out. I'm just giving you the tools. I'm not really gonna give you ideas, geez. So one last thing I wanna show is that you can actually use that same node shader setup except for adding a color ramp right after that gradient texture into the principal BSDF. Uh, the color going to the base color, color, and then strength of the emission. And then instead of a quadratic sphere, it's just a linear. And then this is the arrangement I have of the color ramp. So as you can imagine, what's gonna happen is as I move this empty over the object, it starts to 
give you this like heating up effect. You can actually see the effect as it's happening with the empty. And if you want that transition to be a little bit smoother, you can scale it on the uh, X axis. So then it, it takes even, it's more of like a gradual heating up. Um, but yeah, so that could be something fun, I'm sure. Number four, music visualizers. We'll need the shader editor and a timeline. So you can see the shader editor is very simple. It's just an emission with the classic gradient texture. This time I just left it at linear. I didn't change it to quadratic sphere. Let's switch over to the empty. So we'll do object and we'll eye drop pick the empty. So that means we need to rotate it on the Y axis, R, Y, 9, 0. And now we know that it's right there. So we have our empty here. And as you can see, if I move it up and down, it's tied to the emission here. So we can make it go up and down and we can kind of control. So it looks like a little music visualizer effect here. What we're going to do is I loaded in a track. So I kind of just opened up the video sequence editor in this second panel. I pressed add and then added a sound. There's a bit of a build here and I want to mark where the beat drops. And then after that, it's kind of the same beat. So I can follow that pretty easily. Go back and mark where the beat drops. On 30, it drops. In the keyframe editor, I'm just hit M and I'll add a marker there just for my own visual reference. And now I'm going to hit this button right here and this is auto keying and you can see it's red. It's going to be recording your keyframes. So I'll just live record, moving the empty to the track and you can kind of see the results of that. So let's go. Back and you can see the keyframes have been automatically placed. I'm going to turn this off so I don't accidentally place any more keyframes. Now this is just an effect that we have. We can go back in, we can change the colors. So let's say I plug the color in here and I turn the brightness up to 10. Ooh, now it's glowing. And we can change the color. We can make it red. But the really fun thing is that we can take this original shape and I'm going to add another empty. Let's make it a sphere. Let's make it really big. We can take this and this and parented to the empty with control P. So now we can take this with us somewhere. We can move it over here and it will still continue to play the same animation. We can take this, we can rotate it 90 degrees. Let's say we want to create like a tunnel or something, some kind of cool visualizer here. Duplicate it. So now we have top and bottom. We can duplicate it again, rotate it on the Y. And now based off of that one effect using the empty, uh, we have this whole like music visualizer effect. And because it's all tied to this giant sphere, we can change its position. We can even animate this empty itself because this has no keyframes. I think for a music visualizer, you kind of want that constant energy. If we open up the graph editor, you can kind of see our sloppy work here, but it's okay. We can like smooth it out or we can just leave it as is. If I click on one dot and then I hit L, it'll select everything linked. We go to the modifiers, we add a modifier, we can add a noise modifier. And what that does is you can see on the straight line, it gives it a little bit of a wiggle and we can increase that scale to make it smoother or we can increase the strength to really make it strong. And now every single time it pulsates up or down, it will have a bit of like a shake to it. And we can also give this some type of rotation. Now this looks like some kind of, you know, 2001 music visualizer, but it's a cheap and quick way to do a visualizer if you, um, if you want to. Number, oh, I forgot, six, control multiple objects at once. So some of you have probably seen this Akira recreation video that I made not too long ago. As the scenes grew, they became larger and larger and larger, but I like to work quick, dirty. And what I ended up doing is a lot of the animation here is done using empties, but you can kind of see how everything's broken up. So I'd make a cluster of buildings, bunch of lights, all this kind of stuff. And then I would then parent all of that into one empty so that I don't really have to animate the buildings and keep track of what's animated versus what's not. I just can separate them into chunks. This empty right here is controlling all these foreground buildings. And then the smaller one is controlling the immediate foreground. So at least from a distance, when I zoom out, I can kind of see all the clusters, all the collections, and I can better organize my scene for myself. And when I animate them, I do the first pass of animation, which is I animate just the empties in this one straight direction. And then I go inside and if I want to adjust certain buildings, like maybe I want this building to, you know, come up later or like this building, 
it's still going to go down. But let's say I don't want it to go down so slow. Let's say I want it to kind of move up a little bit or kind of to another direction. I can still keyframe it and I have that control over it. So this was the biggest thing that I used empties for and the biggest thing that helped me, especially because I wanted this like really dynamic and hypnotizing parallax effect. Using empties to control these big collections of buildings was just uh, much easier to animate than trying to do anything fancy outside of that. And there you have it, five, uh, six, or or maybe like 10-ish, ten technically, maybe, ways you can use empties in your Blender scenes. If you're not using empties, definitely give some of these a try and let me know how it goes for you. If you use empties in another way that I maybe didn't mention, feel free to leave that down in the comments below. I would love to learn. I'm sure the viewers would love to learn. Bye.